Today, we have Samantha Racer with us, who is a marketing specialist with over 18 years of sales, marketing, and brand management experience across leading companies in healthcare, insurance, telecommunications, retail, and advertising in India, as well as international markets like Africa, Middle East, and Far East. SIR has been a part of leading organizations like Airtel, Reliance, and Apollo Hospitals prior to taking charge as the Chief Marketing Officer for the Narayana Health Group of Hospitals. SIR has been named amongst the 50 most talented Chief Marketing Officers in India at the 2014 World Marketing Congress in Mumbai. Good evening, everybody. Am I, so am I audible there? Up and uh, it's a huge... Okay, great. Uh, good to see that you guys still have energy. I'm told that uh, you guys have been having classes since 8 o'clock. Yes, that, that's, a, that's a big yes. So a lot of energy. Good. Uh, so I have been asked to talk about my journey from the campus to here uh, and probably share some of the learnings which one has uh, seen over the years, uh, so which I'll try and do that and uh, kind of share probably few of the things which has worked for me. Uh, you know, you could uh, you know, learn from that. Uh, different things work for different people. I can only talk for myself. Uh, but there are certain basic principles through which success and career uh, success more specifically get determined so uh, I have had the opportunity of uh, listening to uh, and working with uh, great corporate leaders uh, and also learning uh, by reading by watching uh, people with whom I have not probably have a personal interaction with and it I will try and put out some of the learnings which I have uh, uh, and uh, you know probably uh, it will help you in some way uh, because I'm sure all of you will find your own mojo in life I'm sure you'll find your own success mantras in life uh, I'm sure you'll all of you will be very very successful 15-20 uh, years later down the line uh, around the time where I am standing right now So, uh, like it was mentioned earlier, uh, I am the Chief Marketing Officer for Narayana Health. Uh, Narayana Health is India's second largest healthcare provider. Um, after the Apollo Hospitals Group, uh, we run around 30 hospitals uh, across uh, 16 odd cities in India. Um, Jammu, Delhi, Ahmedabad, uh, Jaipur, Bombay. Uh, Bangalore and parts of Karnataka, Calcutta, Jamshedpur, Raipur, Gauti, uh, etc. And um, also we run one, one more hospital in the British Cayman Islands, uh, which is uh, close to Jamaica, or West Indies as uh, those who follow cricket would uh, recollect. Um, also we have some business interests in Africa. Now I just want to ask you a question. Many of you, uh, I mean a lot of you, probably are fresher, some of you have work experience, I'm told. How many of you are around, give or take six months, nine months, are 22 years old? Okay. So around 30% people are, give or take, 22 years old. 22 years ago, I was sitting like this in the month of July when I joined business school. Okay. So I was in a similar position 22 years ago when a lot of you were getting born. So that makes me pretty old. All right. So uh, that's the kind of, uh, I've had 20 years of experience. Sir. So 22 years, many of you were born, many of you were just getting born. A couple of you probably wouldn't have been born. Uh, how many? Uh, of you are born after July 1995. My God. So these many people were not even born when I was sitting in this kind of a 
induction function, if I remember the date correctly, it was 4th of July, 1995. So uh, it has been a slightly uh, long journey, which is probably equivalent to the lifetime of many of you people out here. So uh, like I mentioned, I will try and share uh, some of the learnings, which is equivalent to a, a lifetime for many of you. So like it was already mentioned uh, earlier, uh, these are the few brands which I worked with. Uh, the first brand which I worked was, was a cigarette brand, which cigarettes were not such a bad thing those days. Uh, nowadays, it's not something you display with a lot of pride. Uh, but that point of time, it was one of the top FMCG brands to work for. It was an IDC brand, uh, Gold Flake. Uh, so I, I worked on that. I worked on the tea category, on Duncan's teas. Uh, I was also part of the founding team of uh, Inox. Any, any of you watch movies at Inox? Oh, oh my, a lot of you, a lot of you. So, so I was part of the founding uh, team of Inox. Uh, so we kind of along with PVR, uh, brought the multiplex uh, viewing revolution, so to say, because now, I, I, does anybody still watch, or anybody has watched movies in single screens recently? Oh, okay. So, so obviously single screens are there, but a uh, lot of it uh, kind of disappeared when the multiplexes came in, so I was part of that journey. Uh, then of course, I was part of the telecom journey, the golden years of telecom. Uh, Bharti Airtel. Uh, then I moved to financial services uh, and uh, uh, moved to uh, that healthcare in Apollo Hospitals and now with Narayana Health. So when I passed out, so I passed out in 1997. When I passed out, and, and obviously uh, it is something that uh, all of you would be looking at in what, what are, all of you would have target companies, what, all of you have great places to work where you want to work, uh, all of you uh, will have certain organizations where you see. These are the aspirational organizations. So when I was passing out, these were the aspirational organizations. Coca-Cola, Procter Gamble, Nestle, Cadbury, Levers, Colgate, Nike. These are a the few of the aspirational uh, companies that were out there in campus. So when we, we always used to think that God, that life is made if I join any of these companies because this is where, you know, after an MBA you join a Nestle or a Cadbury's or a PNG, you are really, really up there, right? Uh, so some of us made it, some of us didn't make it into these companies. I surely didn't make it to any of these companies. So, uh, but just cut to now, uh, around this time when you guys would be passing out, uh, or probably around uh, this time. Uh, the brand, aspiration and brand mix, I would say have changed a bit. So you, you see, I see, I see a Flipkart, Amazon, Google, Indigo, Voda, HDFC, Infosys, Facebook, etc. So what is the essential dis difference? Can anybody tell me what is the essential difference? So I'll, I'll just go back for reference. So this is what, when I was passing out, these were the aspirational companies. Sorry? E-commerce companies. Now the companies are? So internet companies. So you're saying FMCG to internet companies. Any, any other guesses? IT and digitization. Yeah. Service providers. And? Okay, so I think I would probably, while well, all the answers are correct, but the point which I'm trying to make is when I passed out, the world was a product market, and I'm a marketeer. So world was a product marketing world. Today, it's a service marketing world. So if you see some data as, and this data is I think till 2004, uh, the share of uh, services in industry, vis-a-vis -vis share of services uh, in, in marketing and industry, the, the ratio has changed, so it's more services. So the era of services marketing has happened. So there has been a transition. 
So just hold that thought that there has been a transition from the time when I passed out to the time when you will pass out another two years. So that's probably a, like a, the same, same age as anybody, 22 years. So the 22 year gap, there's a transition. There is, the world has changed. Okay, so there, there is a change in an overall basket. Not that these companies do not exist. These companies very much exist. These companies probably are much stronger than what they were at that point of time. But there is a whole new set. There's a whole new world out there. When I was passing out, that was the start point with Y2K, the start of the Indian software story, right? So people were looking at software as the new huge mantra, right? So, and over the last 20 years, Indian economy and especially the services sector in the Indian economy has been very strongly dri driven by software. So Indian, globally Indians are known as software, right? So in, in, uh, in, in Hollywood movies, you'll see one guy with a laptop back who's an Indian. So that is the image, that's the identity, and that's one of the huge growth areas. But today when we are in the industry, we see there is a gradual shift happening from plain vanilla services, newer technologies like artificial intelligence, AI is, is the next big frontier. They say blockchain, bitcoins, or those of you who have read about these technologies. So again, there is a shift. So from product to services, services software, software to artificial intelligence, blockchain, Bitcoin. So the fact is, the world is changing constantly. So as you go out in the world, whether you are marketeers, whether you are HR professionals, whether you are finance professionals, whatever vocation you do, whether you get into a job, or whether you get into your own business, change will always dog you. So it's a question of how well you are able to adapt to change. The question is how well you are able to handle that change. That will be the, one of the key critical success determinants for all of you as you go along. Because there is nothing constant. What is constant today, five years down the line will not exist. Five years down the line, 10 years down the line, it will be a totally different world. Like I, I, I showed you from product to service to software. So one key thing to look at is adaptability to change. Because remember, the first lesson which I want to tell you is change is the only constant. You would have heard it many times, but the reality is and the truth is, if you want to have, if you want success, you have to adapt to change. We do not know what the change is going to be. We cannot predict the future. I don't know and I'm sure most people would not know what change would be there five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now. But remember, once you pass out, you'll probably do a 30, 35 year at the least level of career or business which you'll be looking at. That's a hell of a lot of time. And that time when everything is changing, how successful or how not successful you are will depend on how easily you are able to adapt and move and spot opportunities and are able to adapt to this change. So this is the first lesson. Remember, change is on the only constant and you have to adapt to change. You have to look out for change. If you run away from change, you will not be able to adapt. So do not run away from change. Embrace change and uh, you know, you can then be much more successful. What kind of change? Are you aware what kind of change is happening? What is the future? Who's gazing the crystal ball? Can somebody tell me what are the trends? Next 10 years, what dramatic changes in the world, especially the business world, do you see? Any thoughts? Any ideas? IoT, okay. Artificial intelligence, okay. Automation has always been there. I mean, automation from industrial revolution has been there. So if you would like to be a little more specific, uh, because automation is there. I mean, it is there 100, 150 years onwards. So what specific kind of automation you are talking about? Anything else? 
virtual reality robotics 3d printing that's a good one 3d printing in healthcare we are uh, now uh, using 3d printing more and more so uh, earlier somebody would have done a re knee replacement these are standard sizes now it's all customized they they print as per uh, you know your own uh, body part so that that's a good one sustainable energy okay yeah organic farming okay yes digitalization yeah that's just a pretty much oft used word for everything but yes that that's one way world is moving electric cars great smart cars good who is sorry iot yeah somebody also mentioned iot earlier who is driving this change sorry humans little more specific consumers who are the people who are at the forefront of change youth youngsters you will be surprised the most of the change is driven by people older than me so i'll, I'll give you some examples okay. so how many of you have heard of steve jobs uh, that's a big fan following out here yeah what do you think he transformed did he transform anything did he change anything what did he change sorry smartphones laptops laptops he didn't really change he got a better laptop but yeah smartphone yes entire so steve jobs disrupted three industries one man in his lifetime and which was cut short very very tragically by uh, pancreatic cancer he transformed three and he disrupted three industries one a lot of you may not be aware uh, steve jobs was thrown out of apple uh, by the board if you have read uh, jobs line so in the phase when he was not working in apple he founded an animation company called pixar which is now part of disney pixar changed the way animation movies are done and the the, the difference is animation was largely hand drawn or machine drawn so there was a huge human involvement so you had artists who would draw animations if you see old animation films old cartoon films in pixar what steve jobs did is lines of code could do the animation that's the fundamental change which he did as a result today animation has gone totally into new frontiers there is 3d animation uh, some of you have would have watched the movie tintin yeah so that's called motion animation if you know uh, so you know where where you shoot against a green wall and you animate so all that all that got started and disrupted by this man called steve jobs when he didn't have a job at apple ironically when i was growing up we used to buy music cassettes we used to buy cd's i don't know any of you would have seen a cassette uh, yeah. a lot of you have seen okay so you, okay so cd's and cassettes uh, we used to buy so you would buy typically if you buy and anybody watch hindi movies out here yeah. okay so when we used to buy and when we were in college or in school we would buy cassettes we never had the choice of buying one movie cassette it would be two movies or three movies and they would they would choose the movies so if i want movie one songs i will be forced to buy on the b side of the cassette another movie song which i have no interest in buying but there's no option i have to buy that was the take it or leave it at best some companies would offer combinations one a b c or a c d great combination that's as much choice that was there then came itunes it totally disrupted the music industry it totally disrupted the music royalty system it killed large companies like emi and hmv and it totally disrupted the world so these are two which probably were you lot of you were younger 
iPhone, of course, a lot of you are aware how it disrupted, so I don't need to tell. But think that one man in his lifetime disrupted total industries. So now I will again re -ask, again ask that question which I was asking earlier. Who do you think now are disrupting the world? Steve Jobs is one. Reliance Geo, yes, at a business level, yes. Elon Musk, okay, good. Donald <laughs> Yes, Baba Ramdev and Reliance, they are they are market disruptors. They are not really disruptors in a way where we which it changes the way of life for us. They're, they're smart marketeers, yes. Both Baba Ramdev and Reliance. Anybody has heard of Reed Hastings? Anybody? Reed Hastings? No. Okay. I'll rephrase the question a bit. Anybody's heard of Netflix? Yeah. Reed Hastings is the founder and CEO of Netflix. Okay. So entertainment today is being disrupted by Netflix. How, how many of you have uh, watched Netflix? Okay. Can anybody tell me what is the fundamental difference between Netflix and a movie or, or a Netflix? So what's the difference between a Netflix movie and other movies? It is on demand. Okay. What do you mean when you say on demand? Okay. 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 So Netflix is essentially for those who don't watch Netflix. Netflix is a company which first offers something called OTT or over the top entertainment. In the American context, OTT means when you bypass the cable channel. So you, when you bypass the Tata Skies of the world, you bypass the Airtel TV. You do not, the, the, the content does not flow to the user through a controlled pipe through into which you subscribe. It flows to the internet. So what you, what you traditionally know as, known as streaming. So which is essentially the technology YouTube also uses. But Netflix goes one step ahead. It says, Okay, if there is a TV series and there are 20 episodes or 30 episodes in a season or 16 episodes typically, why should you wait every Tuesday or every Saturday to watch that? A season comes, all 16 episodes are there. You please watch it when you want it. You watch it at your convenience because all the episodes are there. So, it is moving the needle from something called appointment viewing to on-demand viewing. What is appointment viewing? 9 o'clock, my TV series will come. So that's an appointment. I have to leave everything at 9 o'clock to be in front of the TV set to be watching the program if I want to watch it. Right? Convenience viewing is I want to watch it when I want to watch it. When I am free. And when whichever episode I want to watch, whichever sequence I want to watch. I want to watch 10 hours of content today, fine, I'm free, it's a weekend, Saturday night, I'm at home, I don't, uh, I'm not going out partying, so I will uh, watch 10 hours, or I don't want to watch now, I'll not watch it for two weeks. So that entire change of convenience viewing is the one disruption that Reed Hastings is doing. The second disru disruption is Netflix is also producing movies, right? So the latest Brad Pitt movie, those of you who are fans of Brad Pitt, uh, know, uh, what's the movie, anybody can tell me? War Machine. So War Machine is a Netflix movie, which never went to the theaters. It went to directly on the streaming service at the same time as the theaters. So the entire movie theater business is getting disrupted. This year in Cannes, when two of the biggest Cannes movie festival, when two of Netflix's biggest uh, movies premiered, it was booed by the uh, French uh, cinema files because they did not premiere it in movie theaters, they premiered it on your laptop. One of the big opponents of uh, Netflix is Christopher Nolan. Any of you know of Christopher Nolan? He, who he believes that Netflix is killing the movie industry and so his new movie, I think Dunkirk released uh, last week and he, he does not want anything to do with Netflix. So they are two opposite, but that is the traditional view. So this is one guy 
who is totally disrupting the way we consume entertainment. So the entertainment is now within your mobile phone, within your laptop, within your tablet, whatever device, when you want it. So the choice is moving from what somebody tells you to do to what you want to do. This is a second disruption. This is, so I'm, I'm just trying to put in, and there are many more people like that. Anybody knows who Ma Huateng is? Ma Huateng? No. Anybody knows what Tencent is? The Tencent penguin? No. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll again drill down a little bit. Uh, people have heard of WeChat? So Tencent is the holding company of uh, WeChat. And Ma Huateng is the founder. Right? So how many of you use WhatsApp? So for those who have not used WeChat, it's exactly a similar service like WhatsApp. The only fundamental difference is that you can do everything from WeChat. So while you are chatting with anybody, it's, it's a China-based uh, company, it's there in China. While you are chatting with a friend, you want to book a car, you want to do a banking transaction. So it is like WhatsApp and Ola and Uber and Paytm and Mobiquick and uh, Swiggy and uh, whatever apps which you have, it's all on that single chat window. So Ma Huateng is also redefining the way we consume stuff. That you don't need 10 apps, 20 apps, 30 apps while you are chatting. So his premise is humans are social animals. You are chatting with friends. Why do you need to get out of the chat to book a restaurant? While chatting, why can't you book the restaurant? You want to do a banking transaction, you, you need to pay your college fees. While chatting, why can't you do that? So WeChat, unlike WhatsApp, which most of us use, it has all these built-in features. So while chatting, you can do all of that. So that is so cab hailing, doctor appointment, chatting, shopping, gaming, everything is there in the chat window. So that is the set, another huge level of disruption in the way all of us consume social media is going to happen. How many of you heard of Jeff Bezos? Uh, a lot of people, more people have heard of Jeff Bezos than Mahu Ateng. Good. So I think Jeff Bezos will be happy. Jeff Bezos is transforming your present. It is a company today which is disrupting the way purchase behavior happens. How many of you use Amazon? You know what Amazon's basic principle is? The principle which drives Amazon. What is, can, can somebody take a wild guess? Okay, now that's the logo. But the basic principle is, on which they work is, people value their time. That's the principle of Amazon. That you value your time. So if it takes time to go to the grocers, if it takes time to go and buy some stuff, you would better off doing that time probably watching what Reed Hastings produces, right? So Amazon today is disrupting the entire supply chain. And in the US, they, are coming, they have come up with a new line, which is not there in India as of yet, but they will come up, which is your trusted home supplier, right? So they are supplying everything. They bought the largest grocer, grocery, grocery chain, Whole Foods, uh, last month. Uh, and then they're competing with groceries. Now, you might say, okay, they are delivering, uh, you know, various stuffs which you buy. How does that disrupt? They're just kind of facilitating. How do they disrupt? It is one of the biggest threats to FMCG brands because all purchases come in a board, cardboard box called Amazon. So you ultimately never get to see the branding packaging apart from just the moment of opening of whatever you're buying. So companies which are pouring billions of dollars in branding and box, it all, all, whatever you buy from Amazon comes in a blank brown cardboard box with just written Amazon. 
So in a way, the disruption is, it is the death of branding as you see it. You know, that ultimately doesn't matter what is inside. Amazon is slowly killing the entire brand machine. It does not matter. Because ultimately you are consuming Amazon. Tomorrow, if Amazon comes up with a toothpaste or a soap, nobody would know. Because you are buying from Amazon. So a Colgate is at a threat, a Procter & Gamble is at a threat, a, a handset maker is at a threat. Depends on what Amazon chooses to uh, make. Just that they are not choosing right now to make. But Amazon Fresh is coming, Amazon Rosses is coming. What happens to the world? You buy everything from Amazon. So that is the scale of disruption. Going forward you will see many many large established brands fall down by the wayside because of this one man called Jeff Bezos. Because he is disrupting and he is breaking it up. Now these are all happening in the present and in the realm of things which touch our everyday lives. Then there's a gentleman called Elon Musk. A lot of you are aware. I'm sure there are a lot of fans of Elon Musk like me. What is he doing? Tesla. Right? So the Tesla car. I, I, I was in Australia in uh, May and I happened to get inside a Tesla car. Yes. So it was there in, on, on show for a, in a mall and uh, it's, it's a very, very different thing. The front hood opens and there's nothing. It's very scary. So he is disrupting the way automobiles are uh, going to be driven. Remember, most of the smart cars are coming with alternative technologies, especially batteries, and that's where the Tesla market capitalization recently overtook General Motors. How does that disrupt? It disrupts in a way that if Tesla really gets his way with automobiles, and others follow suit because everybody else, Volvo has tested, uh, is, is testing self-driving battery operated cars pretty much at an advanced stage in Sweden. If that happens, oil will never cross $20 a barrel. In 2008, oil was $145 a barrel, right? Saudi Arabia is thinking of introducing income tax for the first time. So what happens is the Middle East oil economy disappears. You can already see the strains of this kind of future technology is because you, you, you currently are aware that uh, uh, Saudi and uh, UAE are fighting with Qatar and they have, if you read the newspapers, they have done a blockade. This is because earnings are falling from oil. Till the time earnings were good and everybody was happy because they were minting money. Today, it is under threat. They are realizing that it is under threat. So this is how Tesla and other people who will follow him will disrupt the entire oil economy. The oil economy on which the entire world runs today is getting disrupted in front of your eyes. As today is not far, they are saying 2020 or 2021, first commercial runs of battery operated smart cars would uh, be on the roads, at least in the western world. Space travel. Musk runs also another company called SpaceX. He wants space travel to be like, you know, the way you go to Delhi from Pune, you should be able to go to Mars. Logic is, and he has, he has built his foundation on a very, very simple premise, that space travel is expensive because rockets are not reused. Air travel is cheap because aeroplanes are reused. So what if rockets are reused? cost falls. You can go. You can go to Mars and come back. You can go to Moon and come back. So that is the level of disruption that is happening. Hyperloop. You know, it's, it's a loop in a pod where it's a high speed transit between cities. Uh, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, uh, they got uh, supposedly uh, verbal approval to build a hyperloop from New York to Washington, D.C which currently takes by train two and a half hours. Uh, they want to bring it down to 29 minutes. So uh, they are also talking of Hyperloop in India and they are also talking of Hyperloop in uh, this thing. The point is not whether Hyperloop will be successful or not. The point is people like Musk and Ma and Jeff Bezos 
and all these Reed Hastings are changing the world in front of our eyes. So we don't know five years down the line, and these are only five examples I have given. There are, there are 50 more examples that are happening now. Right? You don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. In five years' time, ten years' in time, the world which you see and the world which you inhabit today may not exist or exist in a very, very dramatic different form. So again, I'll come back to the earlier point. Adaptability to change is the key determinant to success in your careers and in life. Adapt to change, learn, read trends, right? Because the world is getting disrupted. Like most of you don't know who Mahua Teng is, but he is disrupting your world. You don't know. Amazon is disrupting your world. Musk is disrupting your world. You don't even know. But one day the world gets suddenly disrupted. You shouldn't be caught off guard. You should be prepared for that change. So the question is, how do you equip yourself in this changing world? How do you future-proof yourself? Because you are on the cusp of getting into the workforce. In two years hence, you will be entering the workforce. A large number of people amongst you wouldn't have worked, uh, I would assume that, would, not, would have no prior work experience. But trust me, in two years is a long time. What you see the world today in two years may be dramatically different. And as you get into the first five years of your workforce, it will be far more dramatically different. So, adapt to change. You should adapt to change. And like I said, I gave you five examples. There could be 50 examples. There are changes which I am not aware of. There are changes that obviously you will not be aware of. But you should be ready for change. So the point is be a chameleon. You know what a chameleon is, right? It changes colors as per the situation. So you should be able to adapt and change with times, with the way the world gets disrupted. I will try and put up a few of the points since I've now talked about uh, many of the uh, ways the world is getting changed. Some of the things that have helped me personally, I've learned it from many people, from reading, from whatever, which I'll, I'll, I'll try and share. Again, with a disclaimer, worked for me. May or may not work for you. But uh, generally works for people. So you have to find your own thing, what works for you. But by and large, these things work for you. So one is adaptability to change. Second is physical fitness. How many of you watched the Wimbledon uh, last weekend? Uh, so not too many tennis fans. Who won? Yeah. So there is, there is a debate out there who's the greatest. Is Federer the greatest or is Nadal the greatest? I'm sure both would have strong points of view, but the fact remains, Federer was playing before Nadal was playing and Federer is playing after Nadal is playing. That's the difference. What's the difference of, uh, what is Sachin Tendulkar? Not, not only he's a batting genius, the fact is, he played 22 years at the top level. He was playing when others were playing, others retired and he kept on playing, next batch came, he's playing. So it is not about his talent. How did both of them achieve that, physical fitness? In the quest for academics, in the quest for uh, being a brainy lot that you are and the bright kids that you are, sometimes the importance of fitness is underrated. But remember, you have 30, 35, 40 years of your career ahead. And your really cream part of your career will come towards the faggot when you'll become CEOs and senior people uh, where you would be earning big bucks and you'll be earning, you'll be at the top of organization, that point of time fitness will count. It is not important, it doesn't seem important at this point of time, but that point of time it will count. So whatever you do, be fit, be fit. It is extremely important 
that you have to be fit because remember life is not a sprint it is a marathon you have to be fit to be able to be successful again this is success in your career but that can only happen if you have fitness to be able to drive your career for 35 40 years and at the fag end of the career the last 10 years is the most critical time of your career if you're not fit you have lost the game because that point of time you will be earning probably 100 times of what you will be earning right now you will be running organizations you'll be mentoring people you will be uh, you know uh, charting the co course for the next generation you cannot not be fit at that point of time right so that's important you read every day how many of you read every day and i don't mean what you read in class how much how much time do you read every day one hour okay. one hour. good because remember breakthrough ideas come from other businesses than the business which you are in and that can only come through reading if you read about elon musk and a lot of you talked about elon i mean mentioned elon musk he reads a lot. He reads one, one, hour. a lot of his ideas have come from other industries. It has nothing to do with what he does in his core business. The fact is, read. There's nothing opens the mind as reading. Those of you who do not read, I implore you for a successful career, read at least one hour a day. Every day. 365 days. I try to read around an hour every day. Uh, I travel 20 days a month. I'm on the road. I'm, I'm into flights and into hotels, but I still try. Uh, not that I'm greatly successful uh, at, at always maintaining that one hour, but I, I do try. And I know all the successful people. I'm sure you're aware Bill Gates reads two hours a day. Warren Buffett reads two hours a day. The Oracle of Omaha, okay? He reads two hours a day. And it could be anything. It could be anything but read, 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 read. It can never be overemphasized how important reading is. It will open your mind. It will you know, take you to the new levels. And it will help you adapt. It will help you become a better chameleon. And every day before you go to sleep, ask yourself, am I more knowledgeable than when I got up. If the answer is yes, you have had a fruitful day and you have grown in life by a small inch. It is like a plant growing. Your, your mental growth and your growth in your career is like a, a plant growing from seed. So you can't see the growth, but it is growing. It is growing. So as long as in a day when you go to bed, you learn, you know something more. You have done something better that day. Then when you woke up, you're progressing towards life. You're progressing towards success. So it is very important to ask that question. That am I, did I learn something today? Do I know something more today than I didn't know, that, than I knew yesterday? Ask yourself that question. Try to become better every day. And this is a race against yourself. This is not a race against anybody. This is not a race against your friends. This is not a race against anybody. This is a race against yourself. It's a little bit like people who, who run long distances. The race is not against anybody. The race is against your earlier time. People who run marathons. The race is with yourself. This race is your, with yourself. Are you slightly better? Marginally better? Doesn't matter how marginal. But better, the net, are you positive every day? That will slowly add up. You will not realize in a day, you will not realize in a week, you will probably not realize in a year, but you will realize it in a decade that you have really moved, you have really moved the needle. Right? To be successful, have a personal goal, a stretch goal. Have a goal, whatever it is. Whatever it is. It could be a silliest goal in the world, but have a goal and have a stretch goal. It's not something that you could walk and get it. That you have to stretch yourself. Have a stretch goal. Have a plan to reach somewhere, somewhere, doesn't matter where. 
but have a plan have a goal some goal it could be career goal it could be philanthropic goal it could be health goal it could be whatever have a goal at least one goal in life this will continuously be putting you on the path to success have a goal have a goal and it doesn't matter where where are you growing but at least you're going somewhere you're walking okay uh, there's a very famous uh, ad by a liquor company called johnny walker which says keep walking it's a very very strong message even a lot of brands do it nike says just do it so says, just do it just walk go somewhere but go get up and walk get up and go right so have a goal whatever it is you have you you should write it down somewhere you have it in your mind you have it in your uh, you know conscience whichever way but have a goal and it should be straight stretch goal it shouldn't be one which you can walk and achieve tomorrow then there's no fun in it it should be stretch goal be tech savvy because it is a tech century right how many of you uh, many of you I'm, i would presume go to your hometowns take flights hmm how many most of you would fly how many of you have used the qr code scanner at airports not the not the boarding pass printer the qr code scanner all airports today most large airports today have the qr code scanner that's the easiest way to travel that is one technology that is there the the point which i'm trying to make is be childlike curious in exploring technology because that technology is going to again disrupt and change your world like crazy if you do not have a hang of technology you will be left behind there is no choice there is absolutely no choice whether whatever background you are from you may be from a tech background you may be from a non tech background doesn't matter if you are not tech savvy you will be left behind if technology doesn't excite you you will be left behind like i said you know if you are still taking paper tickets and print outs and boarding passes and going in flight today it is all tech enabled by the way right most indian airports today and and i give the airport example a lot because i uh, practically know the ins and out of every airport because i travel 20 days a month uh, most indian air airports are now uh, getting into a situation with qr code you don't even need to see id it will be linked to aadhar so we'll just walk through you'll just flash your barcode and uh, in bangalore airport i know already they have installed the devices i'm not i, I think in delhi also they have in t3 they have installed but you just pass through no checking go in that's technology that is only one example of day to day usage of technology by the way this qr code technology has been there in use for last 5 6 months now in india right so be tech savvy be tech savvy because there is no other way unfortunately if you are not tech savvy like i said you will be left behind because there is no other way there is no other way today another very key success area is respect professionals surround yourself with people better than you it ups your game don't be andho mein kana raja always surround yourself with people better bigger achievers than you it pushes you to strive more human mind is like that if you surround yourself with people of your level or lower level you will fall into the rut of mediocrity to pull yourself and to go to the next level you have to when you are meeting people you should feel he has something which i don't have intellectually uh, knowledge wise today being a knowledge tech wise so that pushes you to do something more so respect other people professional knowledge professional acumen surround yourself with people who are better than you that makes you better don't surround yourself with people who are lesser than you it will take you even lower right this is one one very very uh, key uh, determinant for success 
future is not an extension of the past. So what you know today, there is no guarantee it's going to help you in future. Absolutely no guarantee that's going to help you in future. So do not think something is there or true in the past means it will hold true in the future. May, may not. Chances are more that it may not. The change, the, the, the pace at which change is happening, especially in the last 15 years. We were seeing probably 300 years of change compressed into 15 years, last 15 years, post 2000s. Yeah? So future is not an extension of the past. Just because things have worked in the past, there's absolutely no guarantee. And in all likelihood, it will not work in the future. So again, I'll, I'll go back and say adapt and change. Einstein has once defined stupidity as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It's never going to happen. So if you want to do, if you want to have a different result, change the activity. If you keep on doing the same thing, the results are also going to be the same. There is no way you can have a better result by doing the same thing over and over again. So if you want an improvement in result, you change the process, you change whatever you're doing. But if you're doing the same thing and saying, no, by some God's miracle, it's going to change, it's not going to change. Right? How do you get more success? Like I said, life is a marathon, not a sprint. So few things that's worked for me and I know worked for a lot of people. It's family first always. That gives you the emotional and moral anchor to go back to work in the next day. There is no glamour in walking from 8 to 12 in the mid, burning the midnight oil and neglecting your family. Right? All of you will have families going forward. Some sooner, some later. Mm. However busy you are, however uh, you know dedicated to your career, if you cannot take care of your family, it is bound to impact your work. It is bound to impact your work. So if you want career success, family first, always. Always. Second is, be driven at work. There's no substitute for hard work. Yeah. Intelligence in Indian context is very glamorized. That you're intelligent, that boy is intelligent, that man is intelligent, that man is a genius. Trust me, hard work is very underrated. There is a very interesting saying, the importance of Rahul Dravid in the Indian dressing room. You guys have seen Dravid play and Sachin play? Okay. So the story goes that, what is the importance of Rahul Dravid in the... This is of the time when they were playing, the Fab Four were playing. What was the importance of Rahul Dravid in the Indian dressing room? Especially from the context of a new player who's come in. Somebody who's played Ranji, somebody who's played first time coming to the Indian team, right? So you have suddenly Sachin, Saurav, Dravid, Lakshman in the team team. You, you have grown up idolizing them, suddenly they're in the same dressing room. So this was a comment made by Harsha Bhogle. He said, in the dressing room, when a guy looks at Sachin, he says, he sees genius. Right? You cannot become Sachin. You are born Sachin, right? But, there's another guy called Rahul Dravid. Through just hard work, grit, determination, shares the same locker, shares the same table. Some matches probably does better than Sachin. So you can never be a Sachin, but you can be a Rahul Dravid. You can be a Rahul Dravid by just by the dint of hard work and be at the same level as Sachin. So you don't need to be a genius. You don't need to be a genius. You need to be working hard. Be the, be be the best in whatever you do. Money will follow, career will follow, everything else follows. Money is important, of course, very, very important. So be the best. Has anybody watched, uh, this is an old film, I, again I'll, uh, this thing, a, a Rithik Roshan film called Laksh. Anybody watched? <laughs> so if those of you who have watched, you'll remember, he's a very confused young man and 
there's a there's, there's a guy uh, Boman Irani or somebody who tells him uh, you know जो भी बनना है घास काटने वाला भी बनो तो सबसे बढ़िया घास काटने वाला बनो there's a very strong message in that that be the best you can be be the best version of yourself you are not a copy you like i said you cannot be such in you cannot be whatever you can be you but you can be the best version of you work hard work hard everything else follows trust mark my words if you work hard money will follow fame will follow success will follow if you run out of money if you run after money or if you run out of success it may not happen but if you really work hard if you really work hard all everything is bound to fall like i said life is a marathon not a sprint sprint it may not happen now but when you look back like the way i look back 20 years 22 years 25 years later it will come but is working hard enough probably not work smart do not focus on the hours of working focus on the goal focus on the outcome focus on what you set out to achieve it's not good enough to work 12 hours 14 hours it is about working hard to achieve the outcomes working hard to achieve the goals which you have set out to be so work hard and work smart work smart work hard both go hand in hand there is no hard you cannot just work, work hard and not be smart about it not be focused on the goal so this is the second thing so in life and this has worked for me very strongly family first work hard work smart and fourth follow your passion have at least one passion in life which is beyond your work it could be a sport it could be the love of gardening it could be uh, whatever love of reading or whatever have one passion which you follow that ignites your soul a passion ignites human soul so take out half an hour one hour every day to follow your passion it will ignite your soul it will help you do better in your career it will help you and these are all in a circle you do one better it self starts self fulfilling all the other uh paradigms so family working hard working smart and following your passion do have a passion follow a passion so like i was mentioning you have to again balance all so you have to have a full working day where you work hard you come back spend time with the family quality time with your family and you spend some time with your passion for your passion that is a full life and it is not either or it is not that i will work hard now and then take care of my family and then follow my passion it doesn't work like that every day every single day if you are able to balance work family passion you will be happy that's the secret to happiness there is no other path to happiness this is happiness you will be happy you will be successful you will have a wonderful family and you will have the joy of life and while you are doing all these four sometimes look out of the window don't be so caught up in the mundane activity of life that you forget that where you are going when you are driving the car sometimes it's good or so when you are in a car sometimes it's good to take the stick your head neck out of the window and look at which direction are you going is it the right direction is it the direction where you want to go so looking out of the window helps you gain perspective in terms of where your journey is what you set out to do i'm sure all of you will do wonderful in life and set out to do wonderful different things but at times when you are doing your work and family and passion at times it just pays to step back and see where i where am i i you just go up a bit look at yourself and say am i going the way where i want to be so get a perspective always do a do a check on why you are doing what whatever you are doing 
have a good night's sleep do not do anything illegal trust me there are enough ways of making good large money there are enough ways to be very successful legally the enough and more ways there are enough and more ways what you will not have and which you will value 20 years 25 years down the line is a good night sleep that is the most elusive thing so try not to do anything illegal there are enough money to be made you don't have to run away to england like vijay malya after making so much money what's the point what is the point of having a billion dollars or million dollars when cricket fans hound you in lords and meme is about you float on the internet what is the point does it any amount of money there's no point right so don't do anything illegal there will be temptations there will be shortcuts but i will i i'm sure wisdom will prevail within each of you to be not doing anything illegal and having a peace of mind trust me peace of mind is the biggest asset you can give yourself right i would like to uh, mention in the end about a few things which has deeply impacted me uh, i would want you to go through it if you have time one is the, the, this is available on the youtube called the last lecture by professor randy posh uh you have heard of randy posh anybody has seen last lecture okay professor randy posh uh, uh, is an academic uh, he uh, uh, was one of the co-founders of electronic arts so those of you game so ea ea games you would be ga playing so he is one of the co-founders of so he is one of the pioneers and the thinkers theoretical thinkers bef uh, of uh, gaming and uh, he is a professor also at at, at carnegie mellon uh he gave this thing called the last lecture when he was su suffering from testicular cancer and i think uh, after four or six months after this lecture he died uh so this is a one and a half hour lecture in which he talks about life success and uh, how good or how tough is it to make success in life and how it ca you can make it so seem so easy so i would implore you do watch this it's available on youtube the second is is a video and a book it's a short uh, thing which is stay hungry stay foolish a lot of you already would have watched it or read it uh, this is uh, if i remember correctly it's the ea yale convocation address by steve jobs uh, where he talks about uh, stay hungry stay foolish a uh, three or four years back harsha bhogle uh, did a keynote address at iim ahmedabad uh, that's also available on youtube uh, do watch it. it it's very strong life lessons uh there's a book called the professional by subroto bagchi uh, subroto bagchi is co-founder of mindtree uh, consulting which is one of the large it firms in india based out of bangalore uh, he is an ex wiproite and uh, when he founded the company he probably is one of uh, the unique guys who poached his boss so he formed the company he and four others and then they went back to their boss and said why didn't you join as ceo that's guts so uh, he talks about how to behave as a professional it's a exemplary book do read it the other thing other book which i'll, I'll ask you to read about uh, it, it read is called success by uh, versus joy by geet sethi geet sethi was the billiards and snooker champion uh, in india uh, so it actually talks about how do you get to success uh, you, you would have heard in sport there is a thing called zoning you are in the zone so how do you condition yourself to be on the zone and there he talks about a thai billiards champion who was playing the all india england snooker for the first time it was a prodigy uh, he was playing the finals of all england he had a spectacular run first time he entered unseeded player going in playing the finals and he was leading i think the, the, the you know snooker i don't play snooker so Uh, as far as i remember it is a 21 point game so he was leading some 13-4 and he lost the game 21-15 so after the match in the post match press conference people asked him how could you lose from that position you were at 13-4 
leading, you lost at 21.15. So you just gained two points where the other person went from 4 to 21. He said, when I was 13, I said, I have won it. So I started thinking, what will I do with my prize money? So I thought, I'll buy a house for my parents. So I started thinking, and I actually saw the street in Bangkok where I'll buy the house. And then I saw the score is 15-13. Then I tried to come back. I could not. By the time the game had gone. So Geet Sethi, and he is one of the exemplary uh, sports people India has produced. He talks about how to get into that zone. So this is one example of zone. And uh, the last one is a video and uh, is also available on text form in blogs. It's called the Bradman Lecture. Uh, in Australia, they have the critic, cricket fraternity has the Bradman. So around four or five years back, Rahul Dravid had given the Bradman Lecture. Uh, these will all, these have uh, deeply moved me and helped me become a better professional. I don't know what it will do to you, but I would suggest that you can go through it. It may touch you, it may not. Chances are it will touch because it touch many touches many people. So it will probably you will become, like I said, after watching and after reading, a slightly more knowledgeable, slightly better that day. So at least one day's task is done. So to end, have a great life, have a great career. I wish you all the success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are positively motivated by your great words. Your session today has inspired us how to achieve success by remaining optimistic and proactive in this competitive world. Now, the floor is open for question and answer. Good evening, sir. Yeah, evening. sir my name is Madhu. Sir, my question is, sir, you talked about big disruptors like Elon Musk. Sir, what if he fails in the future? And uh, how would then the world get affected? And uh, or people like him are very smart enough to have a contingency plan. Yeah. See, I cannot speak for Elon Musk because obviously I don't know what's going through his mind. But the point which I'm trying to make is if Elon Musk fails, probably he'll fail in many of the things. But this was more given from a perspective of an example of great disruptors. There are, trust me, at least 100 more people like Musk who are disrupting in uh, the world in various other ways. So disruption will continue, whether Elon Musk does it or Jeff Bezos does it or Ma does it is not important. What is important is disruption is going to happen and if we don't adapt, we'll be left behind. So that was the point which I was trying to make. I, Drishti Kanojia, student manager of Sri Balaji Society, feel honored and privileged to get this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. So Mantra sir, we are greatly encouraged by your gracious presence and your inspiring address has benefited us a lot. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experiences with different renowned brands and awareing us about the concept of gradual shift, transformation of products and services, and providing us with the mantra, if you want the success, then you have to adapt change, and there is no substitute to hard work. So we assure you to practice all your mantras and experiences in our professional lives. I convey my heartful thanks to our beloved Bala sir, who gave us this opportunity to interact with such an immense personality like you. Sir, we hope that we cross paths again on and off the campus more frequently. I also thank one and all in the audiences for contributing to the success of this event. Thank you, sir.